On today's video, we are going to find out how much it will cost you to make your own M1X. Today's video is sponsored by me. This weekend only, you can save 10% on any of the iCave Dave swag, whether that's the Hello Mac designs on a t shirt, hoodie, or mug, or a dark mode always beach towel, or even the classic makes all the sense in the world shirt. You can find it all over at iCaveDave.com forward slash merch and use the code SUMMER21 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. So don't wait, the offer ends on Monday. And today's show is an iCave answer special because uh, nothing really happened yesterday. And the best that we could do yesterday was LeBron James wearing some earbuds that haven't been released yet. So, uh, slow news time. I think it's because we're coming up to Dub Dub DC. That's where all the excitement's going to be, and we're only just over a week away. So, straight into your questions. If you want to ask a question, hashtag iCave answers down in the comments section, and I'll answer them in a future video. But starting off, Team Kinetics. iCave answers, why does the M1X or M2 need more than one efficiency core? Dropping from four efficiency cores down to two suggests that Apple doesn't see a big need for them. Surely any intense or multi-core tasks will utilize the performance cores. Yes, that's absolutely the case. However, in uh, things like an iPad, where a lot of the tasks that are going to be performed on it are all lower powered, but also are for, for just general day-to-day -day stuff, like background tasks will use the uh, low power cores. So the way, the way the architecture works in an M1 and potentially in the M2 as well, is that you have four high efficiency cores, four high performance cores, and eight GPU cores right now. Now, the high performance cores are the ones that will kick in when you're doing something like rendering a video, when you're doing something like editing high res video, and you need to be able to uh, process all of that stuff quickly. However, for the majority of stuff where you're navigating around the internet, where you are doing normal day to day tasks, writing a document, all that kind of stuff, you'll only be using those little cores that sip on the battery. If you are using a pro machine, the idea is that uh, you are going to be doing more of the stuff that is going to need those high performance cores and less of the stuff that needs the efficiency cores. But you're always going to need some efficiency cores because they are the ones that are going to be doing things like checking your email in the background. They're going to be the ones that are getting notifications. They're going to be the ones that are looking after all of that kind of background stuff and then your performance cores can just kick in when they need to. And remember as well that Apple is going to be using these same cores. The M1 is also what they're putting in the iPad Pro and the same cores that are inside are what goes into your iPhone and all the other iPads as well. Those other cores are going to be needed in different amounts in a Mac versus uh, an iPhone versus an iPad. But you're still going to need some of them because you are still going to have menial stuff that needs to be done in the background. But it looks very much like if they're putting two into these high performance chips compared to four in the efficiency chips that the Macs just aren't utilizing those efficiency cores quite as much as some of the other stuff. So that's my take on it. Evan Rogers asks, IK answers, how likely is it that Apple increases the neural engine core counts on the M1X and or A15? I think it's very, very likely that that's going to happen. I think this is just going to be something that increases each time that we move on a generation. Um, I don't know what Apple does in terms of making the individual cores faster on the neural engine. The neural engine stuff is a little bit beyond me. But the fact that Apple stuff is so good on neural uh, networks and using AI to improve videos and photos and stuff like that, it, it's always going to be going up and Apple's getting more uh, and more deep into AI as we go forward. So I would not be surprised at all if we get more than, I think it's 16 cores that we have right now in the M1. Uh, 32 would not surprise me at all in M1X. Brian Data Science asks, IK answers, what sort of Intel slash AMD build would I need to match the power of the upcoming M1X Mac Mini with eight performance cores and 32 graphics cores. How would these compare on cost? So very difficult to work out exactly how it's going to compare with something that we a, haven't seen yet. So we don't know exactly what the performance is going to be like, but we can kind of estimate it because we're pretty confident on what the CPU performance is going to be like. Uh, the GPU performance, a little bit more of a question mark, but uh, the best guess that we have is that the CPU is going to be around about 14,000 points on uh, Geekbench and we can look at what else scores around that kind of mark. So we're looking at the performance of around an Intel Core i9-9960X uh, or a Ryzen 9 5900X or 3950X 
and those all come in between 530 and 660 pounds that's just for the CPU this is not for a motherboard this is not for any RAM and then the kind of most reasonable uh, equivalent that I can find for what I would guess the graphics are going to perform like is the RX 5700 uh, which is around a thousand to thirteen hundred pounds but remember that all of this is based on the pricing that is going on right now because obviously a lot of stuff is very uh, scarce at the moment there are the chip shortages going on and the chip shortages not necessarily because of difficulty in making stuff but purely the fact that demand has been super high and also that Apple has like gobbled up a huge amount of the capacity in the world now Apple also buys their capacity way way ahead so although we're looking at at the moment about 1500 to 1600 pounds maybe up to 1900 pounds in terms of the graphics and CPU alone forgetting about the fact you need a motherboard which I guess maybe a hundred but again Apple's building all of this in one go um, and putting just their SOC on top of it with the GPU built into that as well I would guess that Apple's cost maybe on the uh, the M1X chip itself is gonna be sub 200 in terms of the actual manufacturing cost and the fact that Apple is going to be able to manufacture as much as they want M1X systems are going to be an absolute steal for the performance that you're going to get because I, I still think that we're going to see the 14 inch MacBook Pro coming in around about $17.99 the uh, 16 inch MacBook Pro coming in at about $23.99 and the Mac Mini with M1X probably coming in around about $1,100 that's just ridiculous performance for the pricing that we're going to be looking at now you're going to be able to make it more expensive because that's going to come with the, your base configurations on uh, on unified memory, which is probably going to be at 16 and then going up to up to 64 gigs of RAM uh, of, of unified memory. So it's a, it's a very difficult one to kind of work out, but I think it's going to compete with stuff that costs around about two and a half to three thousand dollars on a desktop. Plus, it's almost certainly going to be silent not going to have massive fans all over the place we've seen the size of this mac mini that's potentially coming with the m1x it's going to be crazy it's going to be crazy but of course as a mac user i haven't got a clue how you build a computer so i don't know what you need alan b unboxings and news asks i gave answers will apple put mac os on the ipad pro will apple transform the ipad pro into a macbook nope this is the question that keeps coming up it keeps coming up I do think that more of the applications from uh, macOS will be brought over to the iPad, but I don't think macOS itself is coming. Apple has said it. <clears throat> Apple said it themselves on multiple occasions. They've said that they have no intentions of combining iPad and macOS. Doesn't make sense. The form factor is not a good form factor for macOS, at least to the point uh, that we've been talking about. Now they might bring touch to the uh, to the Mac. They might redesign some stuff. They might change the way that some stuff works. But I just don't see macOS coming to the iPad anytime soon. And the biggest reason for that is even if they bring it to iPad Pro, they would have brought it with this iPad Pro. They wouldn't have brought out the iPad Pro and then gone, oh, and now you can have macOS, because that doesn't make any sense. And for them to bring macOS to the iPad Pro, they would have to have a whole range of iPads that can also run it. They wouldn't have just one version. Because then it's not an iPad anymore, because it's not running iPadOS. It's just a touchscreen MacBook, and that doesn't... It just... No. Mm-mm. Nope, not happening. Certainly not for a year or so. Team Kinetics asks, I cave answers. How are you finding moving back at work after being at home for so long? You know, I'm busier now, um, so I still do quite a bit of my work from home, as I think everyone does now that they're, uh, you know, post-pandemic, people aren't spending as much time in offices and stuff. My job has never been an office-based job anyway. I've always been out and about speaking to customers. Um, my job, for anyone that's not aware, is I work uh, in the drinks industry. I work developing new, new liqueurs, new rums, uh, things like that, uh, and also then selling them to bars. Uh, that's that's my role and uh, yeah I get to do a lot of kind of fun design work stuff into that and I get to go and see a lot of people out and about in their bars now the bars are massively busy right now uh, it's it's great being back out it's great being uh, out there seeing people again I'm fully vaccinated now uh, 
about 50% of the UK, I think, have had both uh, doses of the vaccines. So we're getting back to normal. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it just takes up a lot of time that I would have been making videos otherwise. Techable Tech asks, IK Vances, do you think that the Mac Mini will come in colours? So uh, this is talking about that new Mac Mini that we've seen the leaks from John Frost for with the new renders. It's going to be a little bit thinner. It's going to have the aluminium sides and a polycarbon up top. Now, according to John, he has seen that they have been testing other colours for this Mac Mini, um, but it doesn't. It hasn't been confirmed. Also, as far as I'm aware, the renders that he was doing were based on schematics and not on photos. So we don't know what colour that basic one is that he's uh, that he's rendered. He's done it in silver to match the current Mac Mini. Uh, I have a feeling it's more likely to come in the Space Grey because it's designed to be the higher end one, uh, which is currently in Space Grey, but we don't know. But it would be super easy for Apple to put in different coloured polycarbonate tops, even if they didn't use different colours for the aluminium rear sides. John Malkin asks, do you think Apple will create incentives to encourage developers to port applications from macOS to the iPad? I'm not 100% sure on this because I don't know if that's what Apple wants to happen. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but I would think the main incentive will be that there's a lot more iPads out there than there are Macs. For developers, they just get to access a much bigger market very, very quickly if they, uh, if they click that button in Xcode that lets their Mac app run on the iPad. I would guess the other stuff that will happen is it will have a fixed size window. Uh, because obviously it's going to be a full screen app in most cases, and it's going to add uh, kind of larger touch targets for the majority of stuff within the app. Hopefully it will be a nice easy switch over, like a lot of apps are going from uh, macOS over to iPadOS using Catalyst. So that's it for today's show. Don't forget you can save 10% over on our merch store at iCaveDave.com forward slash merch, and use the code SUMMER21 at checkout for your 10% discount. And don't forget, it ends on Monday, so do it now. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.